Schiavi. I believe you're from the Palmetto State Teachers Association. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, yes, for the opportunity to speak with you today. I represent PSTA. I'm also a 19-year teaching veteran in South Carolina. I just got done teaching right before I came here. Um, PSTA is also a founding member of the South Carolina Coalition for Safer Schools, and in both roles, PSTA is deeply interested in and supportive of both the bills that you're reviewing today. These bills are important steps to combat the increasingly addictive nature of internet access for children. While I'm aware of and sensitive to First Amendment and Section 230 limits on state power to regulate internet access, as both a parent and a professional educator, I believe this generation of state leadership has a compelling interest to combat the addictive and negative effects of unfiltered internet access for children in the same way prior generations of leadership addressed issues related to tobacco or alcohol access for children. Over the course of my teaching career, I've seen unfiltered internet access contribute to increased distractions and decreased sleep for students, two factors contributing to diminished academic performance. Beyond academics, research increasingly shows the immense negative impact of unfiltered social media use on student mental health. For example, in a May 2023 advisory, the U.S. Surgeon General reported 95% of children in the U.S. between 13 and 17 use a social media platform, with one-third saying they use the social media app, quote, constantly. The Surgeon General stated that, quote, there is growing evidence that social media use is associated with harm to young people's mental health. The conclusion was based on research showing various things such as children spending over three hours on social media per day face, quote, double the risk of experiencing symptoms of depression or anxiety. Social media use may perpetuate body dissatisfaction, disordered eating behaviors, and low self-esteem, especially among adolescent girls, with one-third of girls between 11 to 15 saying they feel, quote, addicted to social media. 64% of adolescents are, quote, often or sometimes exposed to hate-based content through social media. That last point is especially important given the growing threat social media platforms pose to school safety and student well-being. I first noticed this trend after the tragedy in Parkland, Florida, when I watched students in my class watching real-time first-person videos on their phone of students that were in Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Prior to the tragic events two years ago in Uvalde, Texas, the shooter posted threatening videos to a platform called Ubo. Users reported the videos to Ubo, but there is no report of action taken by the platform. Similarly, prior to the recent two-week-ago shooting in, I in Iowa, the school shooter posted a TikTok video in a school restroom just prior to the shooting with a duffel bag, and the video was captioned, quote, now we wait. Even when a tragedy doesn't occur, under-regulated social media has a disastrous impact on the mental health of adolescents. As an example, last April, I was at the State Teacher of the Year luncheon at the Governor's Mansion when I received a panic text from my 15-year-old daughter with a picture of an Instagram post that said, quote, everyone gonna die, with specific students and educators at the school identified by name as targets. And let me be clear, my daughters don't have access to social media. They know they lose their phones real quick on that, but it has a ripple effect throughout a school, and my daughter experienced trauma as a result of the social media post, even without having an account. I believe the trauma is a direct result of social media companies failing to adequately regulate threatening content posted online. If an individual making a threat is striking a match, then social media for teens is pouring kerosene onto the flames. And while claims can be made that social media posts are protected speech, even my AP government students could quickly note that the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled against speech that poses a clear and present danger to others. The court famously held the First Amendment doesn't pr protect shouting fire in a crowded movie theater. Well, the modern corollary would be shouting, I'm going to shoot you in a school, and social media is the bullhorn held to the mouth of the speaker. While safety is the most important consideration here, it's also worth noting social media is a massive drain on human resources in school as administrators are constantly chasing threats that were posted on social media. This is why PSTA asked you to not only pass H4700, but amend it to go further. We submitted written feedback to your subcommittee with language requiring social media companies to implement filters to prevent minors from being exposed to messages that incite imminent lawless action or messages that advocate for self-harm, violence, or destruction of school property. We believe these filters for minors should also block videos of school fights or pornographic materials. Yes, parental consent is important as a starting point, but to use the Attorney General's analogy from earlier, if a parent showed up to an adult entertainment venue and the bouncers stop the 12-year-old, we wouldn't want the 12-year-old to go in even with a parental consent. So we ask you to consider going a step further to keep our children safe, 
to promote their well-being and their academic achievement. Thank you for your time and would be happy to answer any questions you may have now or in the future as you consider this legislation.